Hello, I'm Anna, I'm a digital fantasy artist, and today I'll be talking about how to make better and more dynamic compositions for your paintings, and how I practice that by making thumbnails. Thumbnails are a very important step for digital art, and I use it to be really lazy for doing them, but they are so important and they can literally make or break your painting. So I just wanted to say how I set up my thumbnails. I basically make these like little rectangles and I set the layer to the first option. So it just locks the layer. So you can just only sketch inside this layer. And it that makes it so much easier for you to be able to sketch without worrying about sketching only inside the rectangle and make two different layers, one for the sketch and one for the shadows and clip it to the first layer with the rectangles that you drew. So I just wanted to emphasize that before you even start to do thumbnails, you should have a really good batch of references and these references should go all the way from like the mood and the vibe that you want your painting to have to like actual facial references, references for the pose that you want and sometimes even like paintings for inspiration if like you see a painting with a really cool pose you can try to recreate that pose in your thumbnail so you can see if it works out so the more the merrier like get as much a reference as you think it's going to help you and here i start my first thumbnail and the first thing that i'm thinking about in this thumbnail is my limitations and what do I mean when I say limitations? It's basically what you have to have on your painting. Like when you first plan your painting, you think, oh, I want to paint, for example, a mermaid in a kind of like aqua water, like a bluish green water. These are my limitations. So every single thumbnail that I'm going to do, there is going to have to have a mermaid and she's going to be inside or like swimming inside the water those knowing your limitations is really important because you can't just make a really great amazing thumbnail but then it doesn't have the things that you need your painting to have so you need to remember that when painting your first thumbnail what i usually do with the first one is just making like the the first thing that i think about i'm painting in my first thumbnail and most of the times it's kind of like a more Static pose is not like my best pose, but I am only thinking about the things that I want to include, doesn't matter what. So as you can see, I did a mermaid and she is inside the water, so my limitations are completed. And again, it doesn't matter if you think the pose is boring or if it's not going to work out. The important thing is for you to do something, so just start and sketch something, doesn't matter if it looks bad, just go for it. And then afterwards I make a new layer and I start thinking about the shadows. This is really important because again, I want to know my limitations around the shadows. Like, what is the mood of this painting? Do I want the shadows to be like bright sunlight? underwater or is it kind of more like she's in deep water so it's really dark i need to decide these things beforehand so i have direction in my thumbnail of course i can play with the light color and shadow in a thumbnail but i personally to speed up the process i already want to think about the general idea of my lightning and not just change it for each thumbnail like this is not really a mood study so i'm already going for the light that i want it's it's a really direct like mid daylight like up her so it's really extreme and i'm already thinking about values so as you can see this is really important because it's literally going to make or break your painting think about values and again have good references but already put the brightest values that you want down always thinking about how you're going to demonstrate form the best and you don't remember to never go too much on detail like it needs to be clear from like a zoomed out perspective of where your light is coming from and where it's directed to so don't go too much on detail with this one and don't you 
you can only stay in the mid values like i went darker right now but if you want you can just do like this don't you don't need to do like every single shade of gray you know light is really important because i really liked it of course you can try different lights on your thumbnails like you should try but i'm basically going to use this type of light idea throughout all my thumbnails because i was really happy with it so i wanted to maintain it so it's good for you to have a general idea but of course feel free to play with your light settings and stuff i just would recommend you to consider the mood and stick to it like don't try to mess too much you know and here i'm already starting my second thumbnail and this thumbnail is where i try to think really outside of the box like i am not going for the most basic pose that i thought like i am still thinking about my limitations and the things that i want and i need to have in my painting but it's not like i'm going to be too strict with myself so i already started with kind of like a different pose and of course i'm looking at my references and getting ideas from there i'm not just playing around with the thumbnails without any reference but you can do that if you want, if you think your ideas come more like fluid to you, if you don't see anything, but references always help. And here I'm just trying to think like poses outside the box, like a lot of more movement with her hair, like the first thumbnail had some sort of movement, but I felt like it was too, like it, it wasn't... It, it had no depth in the first thumbnail, so I wanted to make something that it felt more 3D. So I made this pose that played a lot more with the gesture of her tail and I tried to include more hands, like the first thumbnail, the hands were kind of just like there. So I tried to do something that showed a bit more of personality, like where is she putting her hands, Where, what is happening and her expression, I feel like you can get so much more personal when the character is looking at you. And I try to think a bit more with the clothing detail, that is something I didn't do with the first thumbnail. So again, you should never go too much on detail with thumbnails. So as you can see, I'm already thinking about the light here, but you can play with some details. Like I added earrings for her, some sort of like scales. So it was a pretty successful thumbnail. And again, don't be afraid to try things out. Something that I would recommend if you feel unsure about gesture is to practice gesture drawing. So like really fast poses, even like 30 second poses to try to like warm up your hand and how you paint on gestures because then your poses are going to stop looking so static and you're going to be able to play with more like movement on your paintings. And not only gesture drawings that I would consider, I would consider making thumbnail studies as well. So you can get a bunch of paintings that you like and you can try to try to think how the person imagined this painting and this composition. So you sh can like recreate it, like sketch it and then try to put the values down. This is really going to teach you how someone thinks about composition and how they make more fluid poses. Of course, don't post it, it's only a study, so you're not going to claim the, the idea of someone else. And if you're posting it, always give credit. But it's really important to study thumbnails and compositions of other artists and even pictures for you to get better at gesture drawing and thumbnails. Now I'm going for the third sketch and I literally got a whole new batch of references for this one because even though I was kind of happy with the first two outcomes, I was still kind of unsatisfied about her pose and my limitations overall, they were kind of like rendering me because it's literally a mermaid in the water and I didn't really want to play with a lot of like background stuff, I just wanted her and the water. So of course you can think about much more detailed limitations and you can play with movement and camera angles for your thumbnails. Like don't do not stop yourself only because my video didn't play with a lot of things that you could. Like always think about camera angles, think about other types of things on your painting that can like make your character look better and look worse for example i could add a rock in this thumbnail that could 
maybe bring more of the focal point towards the mermaid but i don't do it because my limitations are still really strict i really just want the water and the mermaid but you can see here i'm still tr trying to think a lot about more fluid poses and i'm trying to play with the tail and her expression i even add more of an emphasis on her back and her arms so it's really about trying to think out of the box even though i could have made a much more like elements around the character and played with like the depth so having her like smaller and the ocean bigger there are so many things that you can do but the important thing is to know where do you want to go with this painting and always make more examples like if you feel like you're stuck go find the new references even make a study like if you make two thumbnail studies it might already help you if you feel like you're stuck in an idea okay and again the light thing i still really just saw i i kind of like use the same lighting as the first thumbnail and again as i said you can always change it and try to like bring the mood elsewhere but i feel like i was pretty happy with this lightning and i feel like i used it well in all the three thumbnails now i'm already heading towards my fourth thumbnail and this one i really i normally only do four thumbnails like you can obviously do more like sometimes your best thumbnail only comes in like the third batch of thumbnails that you do so don't stop yourself like if you look at your all four thumbnails and you just think like bro this is not it like my painting is not here this is not what i want it's not communicating what i wanted then do more like literally do more and you're going to learn new and new things again and again like it's never a waste to spend more times time in doing thumbnails and there aren't a limit of how many thumbnails you should do and of course always like you can see right here i didn't really sped up this video too much and you can see that i took around like five to eight minutes in each thumbnail so it's not really supposed to be like this huge detailed painting like it's supposed to be quick and fast like don't spend three years in one thumbnail so that's why i always tell you guys to keep making them like it's not going to take you 10 years so just keep writing your ideas down and in my last thumbnail as i said i normally only do four i tried to get everything i liked about each of the other three thumbnails that i did and i feel like the skill of like mixing everything up is so important because sometimes that is going to be your best thumbnail the one that you can like literally get every single thing you think you did well in each thumbnail that you did and apply it to a new one so it has absolutely every single point that you feel like you uh, succeeded on in one thumbnail and i am really happy with how it turned out i feel like it's it again it achieves what i wanted it to achieve like it's a mermaid underwater in the midday light and those were my limitations and i feel like i worked well with what i had and my intentions with the painting and i already learned a lot about how i'm going to use the light so i actually ended up choosing the second thumbnail that i did and again i really liked the fourth one but i feel like i learned a bit about my painting in all of the fours but i did really like the second one i feel like it communicated more of the mood that i wanted my painting to have so i chose that one and this is the sketch i feel like it's really important to have a good thumbnail because your sketch is going to come out so much easier after you've already like kind of seen how the painting is going to look like after you make the thumbnail and one of the questions that always comes up is how do i choose my thumbnail 
And honestly, there isn't really an answer to that. Like, you need to look at your thumbnail, think about every single problem you're going to have to solve in this painting, and kind of like choose your adventure type of thing, you know? Like, you're going to have to solve hard, paint, hard problems in any painting that you do. So you kind of need to look at your thumbnails and think, what are the problems that I'd rather solve? And always think about as if your painting is already finished it, like which one is the one that you think conveys your message the best and you're going to look like and be really proud of. You can always use your community to help you choose a thumbnail, but I still feel like they don't really know your idea for the piece, only you can like foresee the problems you're going to encounter, so make get consider that when choosing your thumbnail. And again, here is how a thumbnail can help you clarify how you want the light to look. Like this is really like the start stages of my painting process. But you can see how by making thumbnails, I already know where the light is going to come from. Therefore, I can choose better colors already knowing the value and how I want the value and the like color balance of my painting to look like. So it's really useful to already have thumbnails to plan your composition so you don't really have any space to get the colors wrong. And this is the final painting. I really loved painting Zendaya for Mermaid. I think it was really an interesting experience and I really hope you guys think it looks like it. She's such a beautiful woman and I really loved this prompt challenge. And yeah, as you can see, it's so important to already have figured out the composition and the thumbnail before starting your painting and it really really helped to make my results so much better. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching. I'm trying to make shorter videos because I feel like they're easier for you guys to enjoy and understand what I'm saying. But I really hope this video was helpful and that it inspires you to keep going as an artist. If you encounter any doubts or you need to ask me anything, feel free to put it down on the comments. I answer every single comment I receive. And if you like my videos, please subscribe and leave a like. I just started YouTube, so it would really, really help me. And always feel free to reach out. If you have any video suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment again as well. I'm so, so grateful for you and thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.